Paul and Full Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from the nearby galaxy known as the Centaurus A, one of the most incredible and one of the most spectacular neighbors that we have, with the discovery itself sort of visible in this video right here. And this is something that's extremely rare and something that the scientists are always trying to find more of, because this is a really exciting phenomenon, a phenomenon known as a light echo. An intriguing event that often involves something really powerful happening in the middle that then actually starts to appear as if things are moving faster than light. Now they don't really move faster than light, but sometimes the velocities here appear to be at least three times as fast as the speed of light. I've actually explained this in one of the recent videos, you can find in the description, why and how exactly this works. And I think the most well-known and most spectacular example of this is the one that you see right here. The light echo created by V838 an unusual red nova that occurred a few years ago and created very similar effects to what we just observed based on the images released from Hubble. And so this is actually a really exciting event, because not only is this a detection of a light echo, but it's also a detection of a supernova that occurred in 2016. So all of this was produced as a result of a star going supernova and very likely creating either a neutron star or a black hole in the middle. But let's actually talk about some of the more unusual details here and some of the discoveries coming from the study you can find in the description. And so first of all, the supernova itself was already quite strange. It was coming from Centaurus A, and we generally do not see these events, or actually don't even expect these events, in this particular galaxy. But why exactly do we not expect supernova in this galaxy, and why is it kind of peculiar? Well, it's one of the most remarkable objects in the night skies, if we could actually see it with our own eyes. We can't though. Here's what we would actually see. This is a map of the Milky Way in the optical light, and if you were to look at the night skies where it's sort of located, I think it's actually somewhere right here. It's probably this relatively dim point you see right there above the brighter star. And if we actually switch to the radio light, that's when you start seeing it. And it's a huge object. In radio light, it appears several times larger than the full moon and actually produces quite a lot of really bright radio light visible to many radio telescopes on the planet although technically only the ones in the Southern Hemisphere, because this particular galaxy mostly is visible from the Southern Hemisphere. If you're in the North like me, you're not going to be able to see it. But despite being relatively close to us, about 12 million light years away, the scientists still know very little about this galaxy and don't even understand what type of a galaxy this is. Today, most scientists assume that this is some kind of an elliptical galaxy, which by extension means that it should not really have a lot of gas where a lot of new stars are generated or where a lot of stars are created and go supernova afterwards. Only somewhat massive stars that are usually only a few million years old would go supernova producing the effects we're observing. But it turns out that something unusual is happening in Centaurus A and there is quite a lot of activity. And much of it is visible in a lot of different frequencies. And so there is definitely something going on here, suggesting that this is not just a typical elliptical galaxy, but instead is a result of a galactic collision that happened a few million years ago which means that this galaxy is in a kind of a transition stage, but all of the dust that's still present here and is still producing new stars, eventually settling and very likely reshaping this galaxy into something a little bit different in the next few millions of years. Normally, supernova don't really produce light echoes, and light echoes by themselves are kind of rare. You generally see the explosion itself, but you're not going to see anything afterwards. And in order to produce a light echo, you do require quite a lot of gas in the vicinity, and it also has to be in at least several different layers. And so the only reason we actually see these rings expanding from the center is because of all of this dust present in this region, which seems to be much denser than the scientists thought they would be. Here's a small illustration of what's happening here. So as the particles start to expand from the center, they'll start hitting various layers of gas present around this region, with each individual reflection then heading toward planet Earth as light created by these particles that moved away as the result of supernova. Now even though the particles themselves move at approximately 10,000 km per second, as they generate all of these layers, some of these photons that are created here are going to be arriving to the planet almost at the same time. And so it's actually going to appear as the ring that suddenly is created and then expands extremely fast, at several times the speed of light. But as you can see from the simulation right here, it's all basically a visual illusion. In reality, once the supernova happened here, the gas was only moving at just over 10,000 km per second, and the resulting rings are just a reflection generated from all of the dust surrounding the space. 
But when it comes to various types of echoes in space sciences, they can actually be very useful for a lot of different purposes. Normally, they're used to map various regions. For example, they've previously been used to map various black holes. In this case, by observing echoes in the X-ray light produced by the region around the black hole. But in some other cases, it also allows us to study the vicinity of a typical star, or in this case, a supernova, with the images that you see captured by the Hubble telescope over the period of the last five years. And so in this case, the scientists are super excited about this particular light echo, because it's definitely going to allow them to study the mysterious Centauri A even better. And because it happened in the iconic region known as the Dust Lane, the region that you can kind of see right here, is going to help the scientists understand what really happened to Centaurus A millions of years ago, what collided with it, and what's going to be its future as well. And in this case, by looking at this light echo, they've already made a small discovery, which suggests that there is some kind of a hole or some kind of an empty space in between the dust lane, somewhere inside the dust lane between the supernova and planet Earth, very likely resembling many of the voids we have here in the Milky Way galaxy, with many of them being mysterious as well, their origin is not truly understood, but is believed to have been caused by a major supernova clearing all of the space millions of years ago. Ironically enough, just a few days ago from when the study was released, Hubble has also taken the beautiful image of the iconic keyhole, one of these beautiful, very unusual, and very strange voids in the Milky Way galaxy. In this case, this is literally just empty space or an extremely low intensity environment that at the moment still doesn't really have a very good explanation. And so in this case, something very similar is very likely located between that supernova and planet Earth, which created some of the effects the scientists observed. At the same time, during these five years of observations, the scientists observed four specific light echoes, which actually means that there are very likely four separate dust clouds with enough density to produce these effects. It's unclear where exactly these dust clouds came from, but they obviously could have come from the original star, as it essentially poofed up and released all of the material over time over a period of several million years. All of these separate thick layers could have then slowly moved away from the star, creating a kind of a layer-like formation. But because these rings were separate and this was not a continuous event, it means that between these clouds there's definitely more empty, low-intensity space, with quite a lot of separation between these dusty clouds. Which of course makes this a perfect next target for the James Webb Telescope. It's probably going to take a few months because it's basically already booked with a lot of other observations, but chances are we're going to be seeing this in infrared light within the next year or so. For now, this is the best images we'll have of this, and we're not going to be seeing this in different light until sometime in the future. But because James Webb is definitely going to be observing the dust in the Centaurus A galaxy in order to understand it a little bit better, there is a pretty high chance it's going to discover something else that was unseen in the optical and the ultraviolet light as observed by Hubble. And that means that we're going to be coming back to this in the next few months as more details become available and as we discover more about this unusual phenomenon and this unusual galaxy. For now though, well, that's pretty much it. Check out other videos in the description that discuss Centaurus A or previous observations of the mysterious light echo phenomenon, including that video that explains how all of this works and why the light appears to travel faster than the speed of light. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.